And like, if you're a person that's, you know, if you're have a voice in all this and you're a writer or woman or minority or whatever behind these shows, like it's not just enough to just be in it. Like you just, you gotta like, I think start thinking it from the perspective of like, are we doing ourselves a disservice by like not bringing on right. the person or persons that can really deliver on the, uh, the quality expectation that we yeah. all have as the people working behind the scenes on this project. True. And, you know, just something to think about, whatever, you know, call me a racist in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Welcome to Tal Capes. I'm Cody Nestor. He's Todd Heal. What's up, everybody? And today we're here to talk about the Acolyte episodes one and two. So, Todd, what did you think the story was in episode one? So, uh, we've got a Jedi killer on our hands here. Uh, the Jedi proper think they may have their killer, but wait, she has a sister, a twin sister, mm. who may or may not be something called an acolyte. <laughs> Welcome to more mid Star Wars, folks. Yeah, I think that's pretty <laughs> apt. I think this is definitely, definitely mid Star Wars. Uh, we've been out of the Star Wars game for quite a while. We hadn't watched Ahsoka. We stopped with... I think neither one of us watched season three of The Mandalorian. I did. We both watched the book of Boba Fett. Not impressed. Not impressed. We didn't watch Ahsoka. Neither one of us have seen Andor to this point, which is supposed to be the best thing that they've ever done. I know, right? Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we've uh, yeah not watched the best thing ever done. Uh, what is there any other shows I'm missing? There was Obi Wan. Did you mention? Uh, Obi-Wan? I watched about half of it, as much as I could stand of Obi Wan. I think I finished it, but uh, I'm not remembering much of all of any of it right yeah. now. So that's how much of an impact it had. I think I watched like two episodes <laughs> and then just watched Anakin and uh, Darth Vader or the uh, Darth Vader and Obi Wan fight on YouTube. Gotcha. And that was about gotcha. my experience with. Obi Wan. So yeah, we've been out on it for a while. Not because it's Disney, not because it's woke, not because it's the force is female or any of that bullshit. It's just because it sucks. <laughs> right. It is. It has sucked for a while now. <laughs> we've been going back through the prequel trilogies too. Those still suck. That if you were may, wondering yeah. if they suck, they still suck. And that may maybe that has a little bit of a an effect on me right now. I don't mm. know. We'll see. We'll see. I, I just think bad is bad and mediocre is mediocre is what I yeah. think. So let, let's get into it, Todd. So right off the bat, I didn't care for the opening scene. What did you think? I didn't really either. And honestly, I thought at first, you know, because we had the actress that played uh, Trinity from The Matrix. I was like, Karen you know, Moss, yeah. in that initial fight scene, I'm like, oh, we're going to do like a little like maybe Matrix homage here. You know, a little bit of the old. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of Kung Fu. Yeah. Which... and I was, But then I realized by the time we get to episode two, I was like, oh, no, this is our fighting style here. Yeah. That wasn't just a, like a little, you know, we got the, you know, carry on Moss. So let's do a little matrix thing here yeah. in this opening scene. Now that's what we're going for. Yeah, that was going <laughs> to be my question. What did you think of the space Kung Fu that's in the first scene? So basically our, our main character, well, the character we see at first, she's a, kind of unnamed, basically the unnamed acolyte at that point. Right. She's going into some kind of space cantina, space restaurant, something like that, looking for Carrie Ann Moss. She's a Jedi. She wants to kill her. She does this stupid thing like, you know, ready yourself. Like, it's just so I know. cringe. And I thought that was a one-off, but no, then she does it again. She does it again in episode two. It's like, you know, <laughs> prepare yourself. I don't know what she says, but it's like, attack me with all yeah. your, your might or whatever. Yeah. And it's the most cringe thing you've ever seen. And uh, her and Carrie Ann Moss have a little tussle in the, uh, the cantina. And the Acolyte, she's not using a lightsaber or anything. She does have some, like, kunai knives. Yes. But most of it is force powers mixed with, with space kung fu. What did you think of the space kung fu here and just the use throughout? I mean, maybe I'm going to give them, like, maybe a C- minus for effort. Right. Just trying to maybe spitball and think of some, what's some stuff we haven't done yet? Yeah. Maybe, like, some close quarters, like, you know, maybe some space kung fu fighting. But right. I don't know if that really fits Star Wars. Because, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, because, you know, we have Jedi, they have their lightsabers, but other than, like, parrying something away or igniting them just for, like, maybe intimidation factor, mm -hmm. is a lightsaber used in a fight in this movie? Um, <laughs> uh, well, first of all, it's a show, Todd. Oh, movie. I'm sorry, the show. The <laughs> no, show. Um, used in combat? No. That's what I Which, thought. Which, I mean, I think is the, is the point that they're going for, as we'll talk about later with A the Jedi master. doesn't actually fight yeah. until, like, that's a last resort. Yeah, they don't pull their weapon unless they're attending to kill, or they're going to okay. use it like uh, Yor does later on as a light or a lantern. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna kill this. I'm gonna kill this small uh, mountainous hallway we're in. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So yeah. That that's kind of what's set up there. And uh, well, before we move on to the next part, what did you think about? Obviously, this kind of show was, 
you know, Carrie Ann Moss was in a lot of the promotional material. She gets about three minutes of screen time and then she's dead. Yeah, you're led to believe that, you know, she's maybe your maybe your major Jedi in this thing. And I mean, she like, is a she's shown to be a master Jedi, yeah. Yeah, but maybe she's more like gonna be around after the first three minutes. <laughs> Five <But> minutes. <laughs> she's dead. She gets a kunai to the chest and yeah. uh, as she's trying to save some uh random bartender uh from the space restaurant or cantina, she yeah. takes a kunai to the chest because she didn't see that coming. She's a master Jedi and can't She didn't see that. Yeah. She didn't have enough you know, forced to, you know, hold one back but not take the one in the chest. Yeah, exactly. But later on we get a guy that can put it pretty much put himself in a fucking force bubble yeah. and not feel anything. Yeah, yeah, true. Spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> so after the opening scene, we're introduced to our main character. Her name is uh, Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Also known <laughs> She's as OSHA. Also known as OSHA, who is clearly the twin sister of the girl we see in the beginning, whose name is May. They don't I, I don't know and I don't know if it's a a positive or a negative that I'll give the show is that we don't spend a lot of time wondering if she has a twin or not. It's just pretty much out there from the beginning. Right. And I don't know if that's a negative or positive because a lot of times you draw this out and it's not done well. But if you do, if you did it well, would I have felt differently? But I guess yeah. I'll this era that we're in the Star Wars, I don't think can pull off a good you know, twin sister angle that's like a hidden twin sister. Yeah. So I guess I'll just say it's a positive that we okay. don't have to, like, suffer through that. We got it out of the way early. Six more episodes, yeah. So, Todd, what's Osha's tragic backstory and what's she kind of up to now? So we kind of learned that she had lost her entire family in a fire. And uh, we, we do learn a little bit later once the Jedi show up on her ship that she was actually in Jedi training. Mm -hmm. I think she left, what, about, I forget what how this five, six five, years, six ago. years mm -hmm. in, yeah. She's basically serving as, I forget the term they call it in the show. Mechanic she, or something? She's a mechanic, mm -hmm. kind of going, you know, from Republic ship to Republic ship, you know, just kind of doing repairs. She's on, uh, we see her, we catch up, we see, uh, what are the, the Nemoidians from uh, Star Wars The Phantom Menace episode Oh, yes, one. I love those guys. Yeah, so I think, they're, <laughs> I think they're called the Nemoidians, and they're like, basically, they're too cheap to use droids, which droids are more expensive to, like, repair things. Just send a human so out they, there. Yeah, they send humans out there to kind of repair, and she's, she's kind of a mechanic working on that ship. Um, I want to kind of hold off on talking about Amanda Stanberg. She's our, our main character. She plays Osha, and, you know, by extension, plays her, her evil sister, May. Right. I want to kind of hold off on uh, talking about her until we get into episode two, but a character we can talk about is Charlie Barnett's Yord Fandar. <laughs> so what did you think about Yord Fandar? He's kind of like our uptight Jedi, newly appointed Jedi Knight. The guy, I mean, maybe it's just part of the character he's portraying. I don't, you know, I, but it, the character seems a little, maybe a little wooden, a mm -hmm. little just, I mean, I don't know, just a little like. <laughs> like every Jedi ever, yeah, almost, except for like, the original trilogy. Yeah. Just yeah. like so, I mean, I don't know. That's like, you know, we're not going to do that. We're, we're, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, he's very much got a presence. Like, he obviously is a strict rules follower. I think with yes. him having the yellow lightsaber means he's like a temple guard or something like mm -hmm. that. So, obviously, he's for order and for rules and stuff like that. But um, he's very much reminiscent of those, like, prequel era, like, very rigid, stoic hard to relate to Jedi. Yes. That's the problem of the prequels is like, who do you relate to? They're just these weird space monks and they never have sex and they don't love. Right. <laughs> how do we relate to them? And he just fits perfectly within that. In that um, mold. Yeah. Did you like his, his little shirtless scene for the ladies, I guess? I mean, yeah. I mean, it could be for you, but I assume <laughs> I assume it's for Let's the ladies. Let's not assume anything. Yeah, we can't okay. assume anything yeah, these true, days. True. So. But she, have, yeah, he does whatever. have a little nice little shirtless scene later on to show off his, uh, his senior we muscular body Todd. I don't know if you, if you noticed that. Uh, yeah, I mean, as far as his character, I mean, hopefully, I don't, we'll talk about how, how, how if we're going to stick around to watch the show or not. But right. If we do, um, hopefully his character can evolve a little bit and right. not become just such a stick in the mud and like he's got a, a lightsaber up his ass all the time. Yeah, like right now, he's very just straight laced by the book. Just, you know, like a just another Jedi. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, one thing I'll give him, I, I, do, I am a fan of the yellow lightsaber for whatever reason. Yeah. Yellow, orange, some of the colors we don't see before. So I like his yellow lightsaber. That's about all I can get him right now. Uh, so kind of going through the story. So based on some, uh, I would say, some circumstantial evidence at best, Todd, <laughs> and the word of some backwoods alien bartender that <laughs> they bring in, like, oh, that's her. You know, they bring that guy in. Yeah, they bring that guy in. Uh, Yord and his uh, his bangable gargoyle paddle. <laughs> 
I would say. <laughs> she looks very gargoyle-ish, but still slightly bangable, yeah. Todd. Uh, they take Osha into custody, but you know, instead of just taking her, there, this Jedi, uh, this former Jedi who they think is capable of murdering a Jedi Master in Endara, mm-hmm. instead of taking the, her and flying her back to Coruscant on their ship, taking her with them, they decide to put them on some kind of random droid prison ship. Instead of personally escorting her back to Coruscant for trial or whatever, they just, eh. She, Let the she, droids handle she it. She can't be that dangerous. I mean, she only <laughs> took out one of our Jedi Masters. She right. could, couldn't possibly escape a, a ship run completely by droids. But she does. She, they put her on the uh, the droid ship, and uh, she wakes up to some kind of random prisoner guy getting, like, mouth-fucked and mind-raped by some kind of, like, parasite on his face. Yeah. Which, I mean, whatever. I guess weird side of Star <laughs> Wars. And she wakes up just in time for the rest of the prisoners to kind of tell her they're escaping and uh, actually escaping to kind of leave her to crash with the ship and die. What did you think of that whole scene and the fact that she she makes it at all? Yeah, this this is probably my first big checkout right here where I'm like, you know, okay. So, like you say, you know, the Jedi, you know, this put her on, you know, like a, a entirely droid-led, you know, mm-hmm. ship. Yeah. With other bad guys, I guess they've collected around the galaxy. Yeah. They're taking them. One of them who you can look at and clearly know he can probably can control droids. Yeah. Because he is half a droid, He's basically. half a droid, yeah. and he's left powered up. Yeah. You know, he's... They, you, they didn't switch they him didn't, off. They didn't shut him yeah. off, you know. You know, so he's able to take over the, who, the droids as piloting the thing, disable them, allow them to escape in the escape pods. But that fall from orbit, you yeah. know, I mean, they're still fucking in space when that mm-hmm. ship starts going down. Yeah. So by the time it impacts, there should be about maybe that much of that ship left. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard, uh, I've, I, I, I tried not to really watch much about this because I don't, I don't ever want to like kind of have it flavor my take mm-hmm. on things or whatever. But I did watch uh, one uh, YouTube video where they kind of pointed that out. Like there could have just been a little, if you'd had her like, hit some type of switch or show a console where she actually flips something that still works and it'd be like some kind of retro cr- boost crash is. mode initiated yeah. or something like that. You give me two seconds, I could kind of buy it. But yeah, she should be a uh, a grease pile on the side of that like little snowy planet by the yeah. time that ship hits. There's not so, enough her left to put in a pouch. No, ex- exactly. <laughs> no, not at all. So yeah, it's just, I don't know. Again, it's just... Maybe some people can suspend your disbelief, but I mean, it's just so, so easily fixed in the terms yeah. of the story. All you need is like her to like flip a button in some remote voice, like I said, to be like crash mode activate. Yeah, or, it's just another example of one of those where everybody lately seems to be just painting the broad strokes. Just yeah. give me the they broad don't worry strokes. About the details. Yeah, don't yeah. don't bother me with the details. Give me the broad strokes. You know, exactly. Somebody will follow it. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, back in Coruscant, we see they've uh, they slapped a bald cap and green Halloween makeup on Rebecca Henderson to kind of turn her into the character of Vernestra Rowe. Uh, we also meet Osha's former master, Soul, played by Lee and Jung Jae. What do you think about the character of Soul in these first two episodes, Todd? Probably if I've got a favorite character so far, I, I probably would say it's him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah same. Him and him and Jackie, Daphne Keen, um, you know, former little girl that played X-23 in the Logan film. Oh, she's okay. the uh She's the other Padawan that's kind of painted up. Not the bangable gargoyle, but the other one. The one that's kind of Soul's Padawan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. yeah she's, uh, she's in that. But Soul and Jackie are my two favorite. But, yeah, continue, Todd. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, I, I mean, by, by process of elimination, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely one of my favorites, or stand out to me so far, in this, just the two episodes we've watched so gotten so far. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's from, I think people know him from mostly from Squid Game, which I've never watched. Uh, but, oh, okay. But, um, you know, I think he does a good job here, and I think he, he unlike your, doesn't suffer so much from that, like, stoic. He's He's a little bit relatable. Like, later on, we see he's, like, He's forcefully kind of advocating for, like, we need to do this. We need to go after We need to actually take action. We don't need to sit around and talk about it in a boardroom, like, which is what the Jedis do, apparently. Yeah. So, like, he, he's, he's the most human acting. Yeah, you kind of get the sense that maybe he has maybe had had or maybe had some feelings maybe for OSHA. Maybe some, you know, I don't know if they had it, you know. You know, he's kind of upset that she's been embroiled in all this, and he doesn't really believe that it was her that did that. Right, yeah. From the sure. get-go. For sure, yeah. Speaking of that, too, so yeah, uh, Soul, he doesn't believe that Osha killed Indara, and so with uh, Vernestra's blessing, he, your Daphne Keens, Jackie, they uh, they head to the planet where the pr- uh, prison ship has kind of crashed, and they kind of, mm-hmm. to look for Osha. And uh, this this really bugged me. This, this again, this the, the small details here. Okay. So on their way to find Osha, Soul and Jackie have a conversation that didn't 
didn't bother me at all until we get to the next scene where they find OSHA. So, uh, you know, so he, he's on the ship and he reveals to um, Jackie and Yord that OSHA had a twin sister and her name was May and that, and then Jackie and like Yord are like, well, do you think possibly like she survived and she's the one doing this and not OSHA? Cause we yeah. all kind of know OSHA and she seems like pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And so there's like, no, there's no way I watched her die with my own eyes. And then the next thing where they find OSHA, she's like, May's behind this. He's like, I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a fucking break. You, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Just, right here in episode one. Just have him, if they say, is there any way do you think May could be behind this? Like, let him just, like, kind of look and be like, hmm, I don't know. You know, like, know. or, you know, uh, you know, anything is possible or anything, whatever. Yeah. But it's like, no, there's no way I watched her die. I killed her myself. And then it's like, you know. I believe. I believe. <laughs> Uh, it's just the writing here. That's the the problem. Like That's the crux of it. Yeah, it's like you said. It's the broad strokes. They only care about like the big like beats or the action scenes, and they don't give a fuck about the details. And that's the problem with modern Star Wars is like the details and like a lot know. of modern anything. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, true. Yeah, not just it's not a it's not a, a problem that is pervasive just with Star Wars. It's it's a lot. Uh, so Todd, tell us about the final scene of the episode that we get here because OSHA. She she goes back with Soul and Yord and Jackie. They're like, you know, again, I believe you. So they're they're on her side. She's joined up with them, and then we just kind of smash cut to our final scene. What's our final scene, Doug? So we kind of see May kind of walking up some stones along kind of a beach side, and she's heading towards like a, it looks like a ship, and we hear kind of like this narration. It's I guess it's her master saying, uh, "A Jedi live in a dream, a dream they believe everyone shares. If you attack a Jedi with a weapon, you will fail." Steel or laser are no threat to them, but an acolyte, an acolyte kills without a weapon. An acolyte kills the dream. And we see the master ignite a red lightsaber. Yeah, and then you think about this for two seconds, and you're like, well, it seems like you can kill a Jedi with a weapon. Because <laughs> she, she killed one with a steel kunai knife earlier. Right. So it seems pretty effective. Seems, pre <laughs> seems effective seems to me. Yeah. Like, oh, listen, I get the idea that you're going for, but this really, when you boil it down, it sounds like a lot of gibberish. It sounds right. like a lot of, like, just non-speak of, of nothing. But, yeah, um, again, interesting things about this episode. I am kind of intrigued about the Master, who the Master is. You know who the Master is not, Todd? I can almost guarantee it. Who is it not? It's not a white man. <laughs> Okay. I can guarantee two on the nose. I can guarantee maybe. you, it's not a cis white male. All right. So, oh lord. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it seems you can attack a Jedi with a weapon. It seems like steel works. They haven't tried laser. <laughs> They'll try poison later on. Uh, Todd, what did you? Uh, let's go into it. Tell me what you liked and what you didn't like in episode one, sir. Oh man, if I'm being honest, uh, there ain't a whole lot here I'm I'm liking so far. Uh, you know, I think we've, we've got a decent like little maybe murder mystery going on here. I like the concept of a Jedi hunter slash killer. But then they take out the mystery part of it, though. That's true too. It's like, you, it was sold as a murder mystery from the perspective of the Sith. It, this show is not that at all. Right. It's not really a murder mystery because we know who. Well, it's shown who's pretty much responsible from the get go. So the mystery part of it is out. There's murders of Jedi taking place. You don't know why May, because May has a list of four Jedi. So it's Indara. It's uh, the guy we'll see in the, in the second episode. We'll talk about Soul himself because he was there on her planet and then a Wookiee Jedi. I don't remember the Jedi's so name. So I guess the mystery is why these why? four Jedi. Yeah, exactly. We know the killer pretty much from the opening. Yeah, <laughs> yeah from the opening, exactly. But, uh, and for me too, and it's something I think we'll get on into probably when we get through episode two, there's a lot of these performances that just aren't resonating with me. Everything seems very point A to point B, very... Like I mentioned, like, you know, uh, that one the one Jedi, what was his name, Yord, mm -hmm. very wooden performance. A lot of these performances just aren't really nailing it for me so far. I know this is the first episode, but... Uh, yeah, but it's also yeah. your premiere, and right. it's like, this is, what's, this is what's supposed to be hooking right. you in for the rest of them, for yeah. the other six that would come after these two. Yeah, I mean, you know, right now, the only thing that would get me to go on forward with you episode two, which, you know, we watched it anyway, right. would be the fact is, who is the master? Right. Who's the guy with the red lightsaber? Right. Other than that, I have no other interest. Yeah, uh, to its credit and then to its detriment, I will say sometimes it looks real expensive and sometimes it looks real cheap. 
Yep. Uh, it has that TV show kind of back and forth where sometimes it looks really impressive and sometimes it looks pretty cheap. And mm-hmm. like, okay, we had to like not spend money here so we could spend money somewhere else. Um, I like the little, her little pit droid thing, the little the handheld. Little, little pocket thing. But then yeah. I also have, it's like always a contrast because I also have a problem with it because it's another do everything droid. Right. Like, it's like a welding device and then two minutes later it's a fire extinguisher. Right, right. It's probably some kind of personal massager, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Uh, the costume design was pretty good, although I didn't really like their straight white on white with the yellow. I yeah. thought I thought it looked kind of Halloween costumey. I like when they changed into the like the brown robes over top of the white and the yellow. Like I, I like that. So, but on the on the whole, the costume design was pretty okay. Okay. Um, I like Daphne Keene. I like the performance. Um, from Soul, like he's my favorite character so far. Him and uh, Daphne Keen, I just like her character. She doesn't get a lot to do. Just I just like Daphne Keen. Okay. And Yord, whatever. He's another stoic Jedi, like straight out of the Phantom Menace. Like I don't really care about him right now. Um, and then it's just like who's the master? Like you know the fight scenes. This I, I didn't really care for the opening fight scene. There's a lot of hand wavy stuff. Don't worry about how she would survive this. How, how she got on this shit. Blah yeah. blah blah. There's a lot of hand wavy. Not worrying about the detail stuff. So again, I agree with you. There's not a lot here to hook me in other than maybe who is the master. And then like I guess we'll see. Did 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 it build our excitement in episode two? But let before we go into that, Todd, give me your review score for episode one of the Acolyte. Uh, right out of the gate so far, I'm going with a four. I think we're at subpar territory here. Uh, one episode in, we got a lot of room for improvement, I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a five. I'm going to say this is mediocre. Um, I, I think just based on, again, some of the things I just mentioned, soul, the setup of the master, sometimes it looks good. Sometimes it looks cheap. All in all, I'm going to, I'm going to round it out and give it a five and just say it, it's mediocre. It's a pretty mediocre start for me. Okay. Uh, so Todd, moving on to episode two. What did you think the story was in episode two? So we got another Jedi killing going on. Uh, we got the uh, our our good Jedi's are hot on the trail. They're getting close. They think they've got her, but she gets away. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Soul Osha Yord and uh, Jakey head to where May was last seen. She was trying to kill uh, who I'll call Jedi Doogie Hauser in his <laughs> in his Force box and his Force shield. Uh, I don't know what was going on with that character. I don't know if it was like the makeup, if they put a fake beard on him or what. He just looked off. Right. He looked like a teenager trying to play an old person. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it just it looked off. That's why I call him Jedi Doogie Hauser. Um, we get May. We see a lot more May in this episode, mm-hmm. just on the forefront, what she's doing behind the scenes again, taking away from that mystery element that the show right. was sold on. May visits an, uh, visits an apothecary that's been taken over by who I call Asian Ezra Miller. <laughs> that's what that guy reminded me of. He looked like Asian Ezra Miller to me. Uh, he's somehow involved in all this, and she has him kind of make a poison for uh, for her based on some um, plant or something, I think called Boonta from her, her home planet. Just have something they used to hunt with. Right, right, something like that. I heard a theory, Todd, uh, that he may be the, her master and just pretending that he's... Because there's a little scene where they I have where they have a little... <laughs> um, there's a part where she comes back to him and they have a little tussle and you can see that he's like very easily can kind of, kind of hold her on and she's kind of like taken back by it. Mm. So like there's, I've heard a theory that he might be the master. And again, I don't know who the master is, but if, if he is, again, I'm right because he's not a white male. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's where I want to talk about uh, Amanda Stanberg as OSHA. Uh, do you know who Amanda Stanberg is? Where you've seen her before, Todd? I, right offhand, to be honest, I don't remember. She was Rue in the Hunger Games. Oh, okay. Yeah, she was little Rue. She was little okay. Rue. Once upon a time, she was little Rue. Uh, before I go into, it, what do you think of Stanberg's performance here as OSHA slash May? Uh, like I say, there's a lot of these performances. I think they're maybe just a little bit too. I don't know if you'd say wooden or maybe maybe kind of blandish. Mm. You know, you th- you know, she think you, she's playing a twin, but they both seem almost kind of similar. Thank you. <laughs> That's my note. That is my note, and I'm like, I, I again, I hadn't really looked at. Uh, other videos or people talking about this. So like after we're done with this and after this is in the books, I'm going to, I'm going to go see if other people feel this way. But like, that's my problem is like, it feels like the same character. Yeah. Like OSHA and May are not differentiated enough. Like, I mean, I don't need May to be comically evil, but she needs to have a different vibe than OSHA. And like, that's the biggest problem I think so far is, is 
as Amanda Stanberg's performance, like I don't think this role is right for her. Yeah. Maybe she's not a strong enough actress. Maybe it's the material. I don't know, but like it really bugs me that her and May are so similar. And I mean, I get that they're twins, but you could change up the look about them somehow. I don't know, give May a scar or yes, change her yeah. hair or do something with her to differentiate her. And it's like, it's just too samey. It's bland, like you said. It's not stoic or wooden like someone like your. It's bland. Yeah. It's bland. And I'm like, I, I, you know, I know they're going for this twin angle, but I mean, like, Maybe they're going somewhere with it or not, but I would just like I would have foregone the twin angle to get another actress that could have got that evilish vibe. Right. Even if you turned her back to the light eventually, like I would have got an actress that like maybe looks similar to Amanda Stanberg, but is not like a complete twin. Maybe they're just fraternal twins, you yeah. know what I mean? And um kind of got rid of that angle and like got a, a more competent actress. Cause I I mean uh, Amanda Stanberg, she's better playing the OSHA part because she does have this kind of like, I don't know, almost all shucksy, like kind of innocent kind of vibe yeah, to her. Yeah. But pulling off May, it doesn't work. And I think you're showing too much of May too. Like yeah. you're like you're taking away some of the like mystery the, of that. The, the mystery and some of like you know the 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 nefariousness and like the behind the scenes stuff and like you're taking away some of that and like and not doing it in a good way. It's just like pretty like. Um, you know, daytime drama right. kind of stuff. Like, <laughs> right. It really isn't done well, but that that's my problem overall. Like, honestly, um, you know, and this is not because the actress is uh, African American, because like I would say, I would love to see like put Daphne Keene in that role. I feel like she could have done. Yeah. I feel like she could have done better, like with a dual role than than this girl seemingly does so far. Like again, maybe that's just because I'm a fan of Daphne Keene and right. liked her in Logan and stuff. But she's got like the edge to her. You've seen her as a little girl. I'm sure she could pull it off as an adult actress now. Right. Like I'm sure she could pull off that duality. But that's my big problem with Amanda Stanberg here. Nothing against her personally. It's just there's just not enough dichotomy between May and Osha. Yeah, there's not there. Yeah, there's not enough differentiation, and I don't really feel May is that big of a threat. I feel like she's lucked up in everything that she's done. I don't feel like that she's like that capable. So you just like kind of got lucky right. a couple times, you know? So anyway, uh, May gets uh, Jedi Doogie Hauser to drink the poison because he feels guilt over something that happened in the past that involves May and maybe Osha again, set up, seemingly set up that those, he's part of those four Jedi that were stationed on her home planet or their home planet that have done some type of, as he says, you know, we didn't, you know, we did something horrible. You know, I've been waiting for you type of thing. I'll gladly take my death because we did something. The Jedi did something shitty, which that's the only mystery we have going besides who's the master uh, is what the Jedi have done. What those four Jedi were responsible for on her home planet that have caused him to willingly drink a poison and, and willingly kill himself because he seemingly was untouchable in his little force, yeah. in his little force box. Here's something else that really pissed me off about this, Todd, right? So Soul, Osha, Yor, Jekki, they all go to where, you know, Jedi Doogie Hauser is, and there's, like, a dude outside, and he's kind of telling them what happened, and there's, like, a little kid that, like, helped uh, help May by throwing some little dish thing on top of the one of those little, like, peek out the wall droids. Right. Like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those little droids. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, one other thing that pissed me off, that, like, the, the fat Jedi guy, he really pissed me off. Oh, <laughs> the, I, the actor really pissed me off. And yes, I called him fat. I'm fat, <laughs> so I can call him fat. Uh, yeah, I was like, uh, yeah. He just, he, oh, his his acting really bugged me. Um, but anyway, so yeah, they're like, uh, Soul tells like uh, Jedi dude outside. He's like, I want to talk to. I don't even know what his name was, but Jedi Doogie Hauser. I want to go talk to him. So that he takes them all in, takes them all inside this Jedi temple, and. Um, uh, Osha sees like a, a projection or a memory or something of, of her little sister May, mm -hmm. and she's like, "Osha, you know, Osha, come this way." Yeah, and she takes her through a little like, like a back way, a around. back way, yeah. and she ends up at dead Jedi Doogie Hauser's body, and she's like picking up the kunai or the poison and all that kind of stuff. And the rest of them come in about five minutes later, and they're like, "What the fuck have you ah! done? <laughs> yeah, you killed him." And yeah. she's like, "No, no." And Yord had followed her, and he was like, "No, she didn't do this, obviously." Mm -hmm. And I'm like. The point of it was they were all going to Jedi Doogie Hauser together. Did the dude take him on a tour? <laughs> what the? How? how, how why Where would he they... not take the shortest way to that Jedi Doogie Hauser? Did they stop off by the commissary, yeah. get a coffee? Yeah, I mean, what what was he doing? It was like, oh, here's here's a. You want to see our tapestries? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, right. what the fuck was they doing? How was there a shorter route to that guy that you didn't take? 
And it's just there because it's bad writing and it's like it's there for fake drama and f- fake conflict and like sowing fake seeds of doubt about OSHA. And it just it pissed me off. <laughs> Did you notice that when that Jedi Doogie Howser was laying there dead, he had like that, that messed up eye, mm-hmm. and it kind of looked like somebody, like it was consistent of like a melted Cadbury egg or something? <laughs> yeah. Did you, it looked fucked yeah, up. Like, like a, a melted Cadbury yeah. egg. I tell you, like, I'm sorry. I'm telling you, no, no, I'm telling you, <laughs> the makeup design for that dude, like I get, they just, they took a young dude and for some reason wanted to make him seem grizzled or older than he was, and they slapped him. I slapped a cheap Halloween yeah. store beard on him and then put a Cadbury cream egg in his eye and melted it with a little blowtorch. <laughs> and they're like, oh, this is our old griddle Jedi right. master that she's going to kill. And I saw people talking about that scene, you know, where she's trying to penetrate his whatever that was, force bubble. Force that, field? Force field. Yeah. And everybody's like, oh, we're getting like new things with the force we've never seen before. Right. And I'm like, fuck that. This is just an example of what do we need to force to do in this scene, in this, scene. In this writing? Yeah. How do we force this thing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, literally, that's <laughs> a, uh, you know a problem going back to not so much in the original trilogy, but it's a problem that George Lucas created himself when making the prequels is that they did not set up predefined rules for what the Force could and couldn't do. Right. So you had situations where in the prequels, Jedi could run real fast and they could do all this mm-hmm. and. Then their OG trilogy never happened, and then and, and then in modern Star Wars, you got them like again ripping Star Destroyers out of the sky and like yeah. you know doing this com- complete force bubbles and all this stuff. So like the inconsistency of the force is just a problem created for Star Wars as a whole. Now there's no yeah. limit on it. It can be the most basic little thing like moving a rock up to like you know completely like ripping a star destroyer in half almost with your mind. It's, it's just, just the force can be whatever the writer needed it to yeah, be for that scene. Exactly, and that's, I don't like. I've never liked. Yeah, that. that's the it's problem. It's like it's a way to write me out of a problem most yeah, of the time. Yeah. It's like how do I solve it's a this MacGuffin. problem? Oh, I can use the I can have them use the force to to do this. Uh, Todd, you want to explain what the plan is to kind of catch May? So they've kind of, uh, you know, they've kind of, you know, realized that that poison came out of that apothecary drugstore. Yeah. That's the fancy Asian. word for a drugstore. Yeah. <laughs> Asian Ezra Miller, yeah. Yeah. So they're kind of playing off, of course, the fact that, you know, May and Osha are twins. So Osha's going to dress up and try to look like May and kind of go back into that drugstore apothecary. Mm. And they want to try to get, you know, the uh, that dude, the Asian guy, to try to, you know, incriminate it's himself. It's basically like they put a wire on her almost, Yeah, yeah. You know? she's, she's tapped, you, yeah. know, you know. You know, you kind of get the information out of him that, you know, hey, you know, I mixed up that poison, you know. So they got him. And she does it the worst way possible. She's like the most awkward thing you've ever seen. It's like, hey. And he's like, hey. And she's like, hey. <laughs> yeah, hey. <laughs> and it's like, you need something? Yeah, you, what? yeah I need something. <laughs> like, it's the most awkward, like, I mean, I get she's not, you know, she's our, she's our insert character here for the audience and all this kind of stuff. But, like, just give her a little bit of, I don't even know. Make her seem somewhat competent at something. Like she's it's just the most awkward thing to try to get him to confess. And like obviously if I'm like Asian Ezra Miller, I'm like, You're her sister. <laughs> You're her twin sister. I'm figuring it out a lot sooner. Right. You're not May. Like you have this little hood on thing. Uh, you look that's not the hood you were wearing twenty minutes ago when I gave you that poison. It was like purple. This was kinda like black. <laughs> you, you, it's not you. It's not you, May. And I feel like I need to apologize. I just said the Asian guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> No one cares. The guy that uh, mixed the poison. I, he I'm is sorry. Asian. You're white. <laughs> I'm white. He was Asian. Okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, basically Saul comes through again after they've like kind of like cornered her. They Saul comes in. He's like, I want to, I want to, I want to fight her on my own. Yord's up on a, on the roof. Uh, Jackie, Daphne, King, she's up in the ship. And um, because that guy kind of gives up the info, like, hey, she's coming back tonight for some stuff, so some supplies, exactly. And so Saul and her kind of have a little fight outside. He kind of like disarms her, takes all her kunai away, and like you know, he obviously is way more skilled and overpowered than her. And eventually, it kind of ends up that she does like a a a Jedi ninja vanish, and like you know, kind of like spreads out all the dirt and dust around on the little the little ground floor level that they're on, and kind of uses that kind of dirt. Um, kind of a you know cloud to kind of escape to make from, her get away. Yeah, from from Soul and all them. And and in the conversation she had with you know Asian Ezra Miller guy, May did he kind of one way she he kind of saved himself unless he is the master. 
which uh, he might be. Um, one way he kind of saved himself is like to be like, hey, I know we're, I know the location now. We're going to Corver or Tover or something like that, Tobo Borgnine, uh, to see <laughs> Ernest Borgnine <laughs> to see. Uh, I know where the uh, the Wookie Jedi is, mm-hmm. so let's go here. Let's kill the Wookie Jedi. We'll deal with Soul and all that later. So uh, our tease for Episode Three is that uh, May and and uh, and Osha in a way they're they're going to both be headed off to find the Wookie Jedi to to stop May or for May to. Uh, maybe be the first Jedi she actually kills without a weapon because that's her goal is to please her master. She needs to kill a Jedi without a weapon. Without a weapon. So far, she's 0 for 2 because she killed Indara with a, a kunai knife and she killed Doogie Hauser with some poison. Poison. So she's yet to kill a Jedi without a weapon. Uh, and, of course, you get the Wookiee Jedi at the end. He has his, like, you know, what are you doing in my swamp moment as, like, two right. like, scavengers trying to, like, <laughs> yeah. pick some shit off of his ship or whatever. And he's got to, like, you know, again, what are you doing in my swamp moment? And, uh, that's pretty much all you get there. Again, a very weird way to end that episode is it's kind of like the credits roll. So, Todd, uh, I'll ask you again, what did you like and what didn't you like about episode two? Oh, probably probably still liking less here. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Uh, I mean, it's just there's not enough, I don't know, there's not enough, I don't think, good characterization. I don't think there's enough good writing so far. Like I say, you know, I think the thing with the force bubble, you know, the force just being whatever the writer needed the force to be, you know, you go back to episode one, you know, where was Carrie Ann Moss's force bubble? She could have easily have lived if she put up her force bubble. Well, both- Todd, he was, he was really concentrated, <laughs> Todd. He was, he was like in his own, man. He wasn't just in the bar drinking. You know, I mean, at, at this point, the only really, the only things that's keeping me kind of maybe slightly interested is, you know, who is the master? What did those four Jedi do, and right. how the fuck is she going to kill a Wookiee <laughs> without a weapon? Yeah, possibly, well, possibly, possibly I doubt, kill I doubt, or maybe not kill a Wookiee. <laughs> yeah, I doubt. Uh, I doubt she kills him without a weapon. We'll we'll see, but I figure Soul will be some type of way to she'll be the one that gets killed without a weapon somehow. Yeah, it's just another one of those examples where I think, and you know, a lot. You know, we just went through the sequel trilogy. There was the framework, and there was the bones of something really good here. Yeah. But you know, they just worried about, like I've said before, the broad strokes. Mm. You know, don't worry about the finer details. Maybe you get less of May. Maybe keep this more of a mystery for two or three episodes. Let this thing play out. But yeah. there's too much. We're given. We are given too much too soon. I think as far as her character. There's not enough, like you've said, and we've kind of both agreed on the difference between May and Osha. You know, I'm not saying May has to cackle maniacally every 15 <laughs> seconds, right. but she needs to have a little bit more of an evil tinge to her somehow. Yeah. But, I mean, I just, I'm not finding a lot so far two episodes in. Yeah, same. Uh, did you, uh, do you think uh, there's a scene right there at the end of episode two where Osha's got, got the stun gun pointed at May as she's getting in a little like hover car? And she kind of intentionally speeder. misses her, probably. Yeah, I was going to say, do you think she intentionally misses her or is she just that incompetent? She, I think she intentionally missed yeah, her. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> uh, yeah, again, there's not much to like here. Uh, there's not much more than episode one to like here. Uh, the only thing I will kind of give credit for is I kind of enjoyed the, the the fight between May and Soul for what it yeah, was. it was good. Other than that, we the thing that I found, the things that you find the most interesting about episode one, about the Master, he's not featured in this at all. Mm-hmm. You don't get any development. You don't see anything else from the Siths. Uh, well, maybe they're not Sith, but the the evil, the dark side point of view, other than like the conversation between May and Asian Ezra Miller, which again I think is more of a detriment. You're seeing too much of her in a very bland, very right. run of the mill kind of way. So not much here else, Todd. So uh, I'll ask you to give me your uh, review score for episode two and any final thoughts you wanna wanna give for that as well. Uh, for me, the needles kind of uh, topped out at a four. <laughs> I think I've got another subpar episode in my opinion. I've already gave away my only major thing I'm looking forward to in episode three is how the fuck is she possibly going to try to take on a Wookiee? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I mentioned we just went through the sequel trilogy. I don't know if that's maybe having a lot of effect on my mind so. right I here. Mean, I don't think so bad either. Bad is bad. Mediocre is mediocre. Yeah. Subpar is subpar. Like, I don't, I didn't go into this, like, oh, fucking Star Wars, and fucking I, sequel trilogy. I really hate that I feel like I have to keep throwing this out here, but I'm going to throw it out here anyway. It doesn't matter... You know, what your race or ethnicity or your color or your creed or your sexual background is in any of these shows or movies, uh, you, you can only go so far and be so good as your director and your writing, your script, your screenplay. And that's what's letting this 
for me personally, these two episodes of this series down so far. I don't have no personal axe to grind with wokeness here. Yeah, None of that crap. I don't, I've heard stuff <laughs> about, like, you know, stuff coming in episode three and four about the wokeness. But, like, this show is not bad because it's woke. There's nothing in the first two episodes to say this is woke. Other, no. other than if you're, like, mad because there's not, like, a lot of white men in it. Which right. I know I've made jokes about that. Right. We, we joke mad, about that. I'm not mad about it. Like, there's, yeah. This is not bad because it's woke. It's bad because it's bad. It's just bad it's, for it's bad It's mediocre sake. because it's mediocre. Like you said, If this had been writing. fucking awesome, we would have been the first ones to show up here this morning and told you. Yeah. But it's not. Yeah. I mean, for me, I give, I give it a four. I give it a subpar overall. And I'm in agreement with you. Like... It, and it, it's too because like again we've been kind of pulled back from Star Wars so I was ready to kind of embrace something new again we've been asking for like new characters that we haven't seen and outside yeah. of Skywalker mm-hmm. and here's a new characters and here's a kind of a new setting a hundred years before the Phantom Menace the end of the High Republic era like okay you're giving me that kind of mm-hmm. stuff but a like, chance to be its own thing yeah a chance, a chance to be you know to bring some newness and some new characters and tell new stories just like kind of like the Mandalorian which you know that's it's familiar but it was its own thing until season two when it had to be you know <laughs> Luke Skywalker and the Jedi's and yeah. all that stuff and, um, you know, this does that part. It gives me the new, but it doesn't give it to me in a way that I enjoy. Yeah. It's it's not giving me a story that's engrossing me or keeping me interested. It's I'm very, I'm only really, honestly, I'm only, I only would want us to keep watching this because I want to see if it gets worse. <laughs> or or <laughs> I want to see if it can change my opinion and, okay. like, actually come into something and maybe throw a... Um, a cliffhanger, or not a cliffhanger, but a, a twist my way okay. that I didn't see coming, or do something interesting with these two characters. But like, that's the only thing I really want to see if it rises or falls, so to speak, in yeah, terms I mean, of like its quality and its execution. Yeah. But right now, um, you know, if you're like watching this and wondering, should I, you know, give Disney any money for a, a couple months of Disney Plus to watch these eight episodes? No. If you're a I current wouldn't. subscriber, maybe go yeah, for it. Yeah. yeah, if you're already for whatever reason have has, have Disney Plus, sure. But like, this is not something. This is not you know appointment viewing. This is not required no. viewing. It's not something to seek out. This is only like if you're you know. And again, some will argue true Star Wars fans, you know, ooh, true Star Wars fans, like you know, might not be watching this after what Disney's kind of done to the IP anyway. But you know, if you're avoiding this because like you know. It's it's too woke or whatever. It's not at this point. Like no. yeah, you might not see a lot of uh, people that look like you. You might see people that look like other people. Whatever, that's fine. Yeah. It's just, and I think too, like you know, it's something that to, to, to think about for like, you know, people of color and minorities and, and and women and stuff is like, it's great that like they're getting more exposure oh, and yeah. shows. But like at some point, you got to step up and say like, what kind of quality are you giving us here though? True. You know what I mean? True. Like, it's not just enough to, like, yeah, it's not just enough to be involved. Like, I want to have a voice and be like, I want to make something that's good. Yeah. And so far, that's been, I think, the problem with Star Wars is not, like, not the not that it has, has been more inclusive under Disney and, and Lucasfilm. It's the fact that, it, like, it, it's not it's not given these characters and these actors of color and, and women and represented them in like a, a really good way. Right. It's not, it's not giving them a strong enough story to yeah. like carry this through out of something like, you know, everybody obviously became star Wars fans, whether you're a man, woman, black, white, whatever color, whatever gender, whatever sexual identity you have, we all become a fan off the original trilogy. Yeah. That's, that's what started it for everybody. And those, we can all agree. Those are great films. They have, yeah. some of them have problems, but like, we can all agree that they're great films and like that's the stuff that makes that why it's had such a lasting legacy is because of its quality. And like if you're a person that's, you know, if you're have a voice in all this and you're a writer or woman or minority or whatever behind these shows, like it's not just enough to just be in it. Like you just you gotta like I think start thinking it from the perspective of like, are we doing ourselves a disservice by like not bringing on right. the person or persons that can really deliver on the uh, the quality expectation that we yeah. all have as the people working behind the scenes on this project. True, and you know, just something to think about. Whatever, you know, call me a racist in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
Uh, Todd, <laughs> anything else to say about the Acolyte? I think I'm good. All right. I think we'll call that a wrap for this episode. <laughs> if you enjoy the pl- uh, <laughs> plidio, if you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. Feel free to send us an email. Uh, get in touch with us on social media. All the contact information will be on the bottom of the screen. Tile Capes will return. We want to thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye, guys. See you, guys.